The world of resin 3D printing seems to be gaining quite a lot of traction at the moment. So naturally, many companies are venturing into this technology. With prices as low as 200 euros for a unit, the Zortrax Inspire is more targeted towards the prosumer category. So the question is, will the machine be worth the 2000 euro price tag it carries? Stick around to find out. Hello makers, I'm Joe and today I will be reviewing the Zortrax Inspire, a resin LCD 3D printer packed full of features, promising very detailed prints and most importantly, reliability and repeatability. The machine has a print volume of 74 by 132 by 175 millimeters and comes fully assembled. It has a full color touchscreen display which is extremely intuitive and very easy to use. The lowest resolution you can print on the Inspire is an astounding 25 microns and it can go up all the way to 100 microns. Unboxing and setup is made extremely easy. Inside the box you'll find a spare FEP screen for replacement whenever needed, the cover for the Inspire, a toolbox filled with all the accessories and tools you may need to actually work with the machine, a bottle of Zortrax's own resin, power cords, and the unit itself. Once unboxed and switched on, you might be asked to update the latest firmware, which can be easily done through USB. Once done, the calibration process begins, which is made extremely easy with the on-screen instructions. All you need to do is pour a little resin in the vat, untighten a single Allen bolt, which secures the build plate in place. The build plate will then lower itself flat in the vat and simply secure the Allen bolt back in place, and you're done. The Inkspire resin vat also has indicators which show how much resin you have in the vat. This is extremely helpful when printing items as the Zortrax screen will ask you to confirm the volume left in the vat prior to printing in order to indicate whether or not you need to add more resin thanks to the estimates produced by Z Suite, which I have to say are extremely accurate. Now Z Suite is Zortrax's own slicing software. Uh, this encompasses all their machines, including the Inkspire. Once you download the Z Suite and enter the serial number for the machine, you will be presented with all the options of all the printers that you can use on the slicer. However, in this case, we'll be using the Inkspire Suite. I did feel that the software was extremely suited to the Inkspire and the UI, while completely completely new to me was very easy to understand and it got me up and running very quickly. In order to slice a model or models, you simply drag them into the slicer. You can then do the usual things such as rotate, scale, move and so on. Z Suite feels very straightforward, especially if you are using Zortrax's own resins, since all the correct settings are all pre-populated in the system when choosing the resin. All you have to do is choose the resin type and you'll be set. You can, however, tweak all the exposure settings in order to use third-party resin. But to be completely honest, I didn't have enough time to play around until I found the right settings for other resins I have available at hand, so I stuck with Zortrax's own resin. It does come with several other built-in features like anti-aliasing in order to make the prints even smoother and so on. So once you have chosen the resin, then it's a matter of adding supports. Now this is a, once again a very straightforward process. You can add the supports automatically or you can do so manually with a lot of ease. Uh, Z Suite recently had an update which made the contact points of the support sit in a small sphere if you want to. This makes the supports more strong, uh, but they do require a little bit more work in post-processing. However, they do come off very easily. Once the model has been sliced, all you have to do is transfer it to the machine. Once on the machine, simply select print, scroll down to see the model, which you'll get a preview of on the screen, select the resin type you will be using on the machine, and also confirm the amount of resin that you have in the vat. Once done, it's just a matter of waiting. Now, the advantage of resin printers that work with LCD technology is that whether you have one item or 10 items, if they are the same height, it will still take the same amount of time to print as the duration for each layer still takes the same amount of time to cure the resin. The only variable which will determine the length of the print is the height of it. So the taller the print, the longer it will take. Now along with the Zortrax Inspire, I also got to use Zortrax's ultrasonic cleaner uh, at an additional cost. A very straightforward machine which simply needs to be filled with isopropyl alcohol, 
And once you have the model ready, you simply press the start button and let the freshly 3D printed model sit inside for a couple of minutes to get it perfectly cleaned. Once the print is ready, all you have to do is get the build plate off the Zortrax Inspire and just slowly lower it into the ultrasonic cleaner. Make sure it's completely covered, set the time, usually about two to three minutes should be enough. Press start and just let it get clean by itself. Once done, just take off the print from the uh, build platform using the supplied spatula and either cure it in a UV light chamber as I have, or you can also let it sit directly into the sunlight um, for a while in order for the resin to fully cure. My first test print was a little bird, which is around 28 millimeters tall and printed at 25 microns. Now, while I am used to resin printing by now, having the Moai and several other LCD resin printers, I was still very much impressed at the quality of the print in such a small scale with some incredible fine detail. Looking at the feathers of the arrows, you can see the individual strands of the feathers. Now naturally, I, I wanted to see how it furs with the resin printer's benchmark test because that's quite elaborate and quite refined. And I tried it out and as you can see, the results speak for themselves. The print turned out absolutely impeccable. The very fine details printed perfectly on it and the only reason some of the protruding sort of spikes that are, the, the only reason that are, they are bent is due to the fact that I hadn't cured it and mishandled it a little bit. So that just tells you to be very careful when you print something in resin before it's cured. However, apart from that, it passed the benchmark test with flying colors. Now I printed well over 300 hours with the Inkspire. I printed lots of lithophanes, which I was testing out on the revolving LED video lamp I had done a while back and also a couple of other test prints in order to get better acquainted with how supports work. As with many other slicers doing automatic supports for resin printers, unfortunately the Z-Suite also suffers from the same problem and that is sometimes the support pillars intersect with the model itself which in turn ends up in uh, more post-processing or damaged print when the supports are taken off. So it's always good to double check the supports in the slicer itself prior to printing to make sure you remove any unwanted pillars that may be intersecting with the model. This can be done, of course, manually. Now, there was a time for several weeks that I printed a lot of parts which will be used in a very prominent display here in Malta. Unfortunately, I couldn't record anything due to confidentiality at that point in time. However, I do have a few photos of the buildings which I printed. This is going to be a 1 to 400 scale model of a very large establishment here in Malta. Um, the model itself will be displayed to the public very soon, but I can give you a bit of a preview of the uh, of the models that I had printed. These were base coated and one was also painted to represent the actual building it replicates to scale. Once the model is fully released, I'll be able to showcase that on the channel soon. Next, I decided I want to try out some flexible resin from Zortrax. Now, this intrigued me quite a lot as I never knew that flexible prints were possible with resin and printers. I first printed a timing belt just to try it out and even though I had nothing to test it on, it was more of a test to see if it is actually flexible, which it was. However, I noticed that once cured, even though it was flexible, it still had limitations as to how flexible it was and eventually it did break. I then tried printing a case for my iPhone 8 Plus, which I have to say used a little bit too much resin in terms of supports. But for the model itself, the case printed perfectly and I used it for quite some time. Supports came off very easy and the case does the job just fine as it should. But once again, after some time, and we're talking about a couple of weeks here, I noticed that it started cracking. Now, maybe I over cured the resin or under cured it after the print, which could be the culprit uh, of these breakages. But as for the settings, I did use uh, Zortrax's standard settings for the resin, so I doubt those were the issues. Now the last print I did was a multi-part model of uh, the Skeleton Knight by Armians from my mini factory. Now for this model I used Zortrax's grey resin. This was the first model I printed with the ball joints on the supports as this was a Z-Suite update during the review period. As mentioned, I found that these supports were much stronger than the standard fine tip supports. They do require a bit more work in post-processing, however they can easily be cleaned up just by simply sliding a blade over them. 
I tend to do it before I cure the model itself uh, because I feel it creates a much smoother finish. Now all in all I have to say that I was extremely happy with the performance, reliability and ease of use of the Inspire. While LCD resin printers are dropping in prices heavily, a company that opts to hit the market with 2000 euro price point needs to make sure that their product truly excels. And I do believe that Zorotrax have done a great job with the ease of use of this machine. The addition of the ultrasonic cleaner, while at an additional cost, is a definite must have if you print a lot with resin. It just makes the post processing that much easier. Now Zorotrax have an ecosystem that works very well for small businesses or small scale production companies and this is where the Inkspire would fit right in. It requires little to no attention, it prints every time you ask it to and there is no fuss on tweaking settings if you are using the resin. Now for someone like me who does a lot of resin printing for my customers, I have to say that it would be a machine that I would be extremely happy to own in my farm. It's reliable and it's consistent. Now while the process is relatively fast free, as long as you handle with care and always wear your protective gear, the one pain point of resin printing for me will always be having to clear out the resin from the vat in order to replace it. Uh, you have to clean it, you have to stay wiping it down with alcohol, um, then replenish the uh, resin. It's it just, it's a bit messy. I do believe that is the one last thing left within the printing process that's left to make easier and cleaner as I always find it the most dirty task. The alternative to that would be to have several vats for each color resin. However, you would still need to maintain those which is still gonna be the messy part. Um, not to mention that you still need to dish out more money to have extra vats. Now, while I truly love the Zortrax Inspire, there are a couple of small things I would have liked to see, especially at this price point. One of those was more of an automated resin level system. Uh, that way you avoid the human interaction and avoid making any mistakes by saying that you have more resin inside the vat than you actually do. The other small thing I think would work um, much better is a way of dipping the build plate into the ultrasonic cleaner. So having a top stand where the build plate would simply rest on would be a great little extra feature as the current way would be to either dip the entire thing into the cleaner or hold it suspended by hand for a couple of minutes which can get a bit tiring. I also think it's time that a power zoom function on resin printers become mainstream as well, especially if you are targeting the prosumer out there. Um, this machine will most likely be used by people who have customer prints or prototyping and you don't want to end up losing all your work um, for a power outage. And that is it for me guys. Now before I sign off, I do want to reiterate how important safety is when it comes to resin printing. Resin printing is extremely messy and could be extremely dangerous. So whenever you print with resin printers, whether they are SLA, DLP, LCD screens, make sure you do so in a well ventilated area. Also very importantly, make sure you wear gloves. You should never let resin touch your bare skin because it could be very dangerous. I believe the whole community now is sort of bringing this to everyone's attention with all the resin printer prices going down so drastically. So please make sure you stay safe in order to fully enjoy this awesome hobby. Once again, that is it from my end. I want to thank Zortrax for giving me the opportunity to try out the Inkspire and the Ultrasonic Cleaner. Um, disclaimer, as always, Zortrax sent me these machines for review. They're on loan, they're actually going back today. No money has exchanged hands and all views expressed in this video are my own based on the machines that I have received in order to do this review. If you have any questions or want to see more reviews, make sure you let me know in the comment section below. If you want to support the channel, you can join my awesome Patreon family. I will leave a link in the video description. Um, and um, yeah, that is it for me guys. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, ring the bell for notifications and as always, happy making guys.